Hello and welcome to the Factory Line podcast. Today I'm here with Stuart Tunnicliffe. Hello Stuart, how are you? I'm fine, I'm great, thanks. What time is it over in Germany? At the moment it's quarter to seven. For the listeners, can you tell us a little bit about your organisations and what you do? Leipzig Writers is a non-profit organisation that supports writers and singer-songwriters, mainly in the local area, but also in other areas in Berlin and Munich at the moment in Germany, and we hope to expand that into other places in Europe. What exactly do you do with writers and what do you do with singer-songwriters? We put on events regularly during the year, Um, These range from what we call literary concerts. This is a mixture between short story, reading, poetry, performance and music. And we also provide open mics mainly for promotion. These are done in all languages, but the hosting is done in English. We do workshops where we come together to bounce around ideas, get some feedback on our present work. We also provide creative workshops for teenagers and young adults. And we help the members that are part of the nonprofit organization by editing their work, assisting and supporting them, mentoring them with anything that they need to help them be published in other countries, especially America and the UK, because the majority of the the members are published in those markets. So have you got connections with publishers then, obviously, in the US and the UK? Yes, we do. Through the the members that are part of the organisation, I'm published in the UK and the president is published in America. Also, the president has received the Paris Literary Prize last year, so she's also just extended her market into the English publishing market in France. Um, so that's quite an exciting new addition to our non-profit organisation. Take us through how how it was for you to get published and what style of writing do you do? I would say my style of writing mainly is, is for performance, although I have been published and I do write for the page. I think my passion lies mainly with, with performance just because I come from a theatre background. I did drama at, at school and I think that's where the main thrust and drive for my writing is. I've been published a few times in the UK in small anthologies, one called the Tapestries of Life and the other one Poems of the Northwest. To get published in the UK I think is quite different to Germany in the fact that there's a lot of publication with, within the UK and I do think that the standards vary quite drastically. The German market is quite difficult. Um, it also has not as much published there's nowhere near as much um, self-publication as as in the English market and also self-publication is frowned upon a little bit in in the German market to get published in the UK there's so many things that you have to I think be aware of there's a lot of people that will rip you off just to get you to enter a a fee for entry into a competition or something like that and then expect you to buy some of the published books or magazines once once you've entered the competition so that's one of the things that i would recommend to anybody listening if they want to get published within the uk to be aware of the industry does have, like any industry, does have cowboys and to avoid these pitfalls. There are a lot of resources online that you can you can go to in order to help you, even if you just write in recommendable or best um, poetry competitions, you'll, you'll get a list of the ones to avoid um, and the ones that are quite well-renowned. Yeah, because I think it's quite hard, isn't it, when you've, obviously, when you've got a, a body of work and, and it's it's quite precious to you and you want to be guided in the right way. It's, it's often quite hard how to get that guidance. Yeah, the organisation provides guidance to new and upcoming writers because especially if quite recently we've, we've had quite a lot of non-native speakers who've wanted to get assistance or men- mentoring and they may have a completely different approach in the market that they are published in, whether that's in Poland, in Germany, in the Czech Republic, France or or wherever. 
and just the nature of the market may be, be different. So avoiding those pitfalls or going blindly into a new market is, is never advisable. And I think if we can help them or assist them in to avoid those pitfalls and, and be successful, I think that is really what we're about to try and um, help. Being an author is not an easy thing anyway. I would say unless you're a very, very commercial author, but we're not really going in that direction or, or want to be anybody like Stephen King or any mainstream author because um, that's not really what we're about. It's more about sharing the experiences and also supporting maybe more of the smaller publishing houses and stuff like that. Exactly, and I like, I like that. That's why I think that um, Factory Line and, and your organisations work quite well together in that way because more about nurturing the artist um, which is I think is really important so who's helped you along in your life and, and what's the best advice anyone's given you as you've been going along I would say that there are people that have quite inspired me in, in writing just as there, there was in art in, in, in the past I've been lucky to, to meet quite a few good performance poets when I was at Manchester U University, Benjamin Zephaniah and MC Jabba were two who visited um, Manchester University and they were very, very inspiring. I'm usually more inspired, I would say, from a distance. People like uh, on the present market at the moment, um, people are very motivating to me are guys like Mark Grist, who does um, stuff in the UK that mixes battle rap um, with poetry, and also he teaches English um, to, um, to children. There's guys like Akala, who's set up a company that mixes hip-hop and Shakespeare with Ian McKellen, and mm -hmm. another, there's another guy in America called Taylor Malai, who is doing something similar. He started with as an English teacher, but uh, right now he's just focusing on touring um, as a performance poet and also does workshops in schools and colleges. Recently he was in Russia and I, he was also in Berlin. I wouldn't say that I have a mentor. I did, did have um, tutors when I was at Manchester University studying creative writing. But I, I think myself, it's probably right now more of the, the, the people that I collaborate with here. I get a lot from collaboration and performance with fellow poets, um, Michelle West Davis and Rima. Um, I've performed with um, recently and got a lot from that. And I think that's probably maybe where my performance will be going in the future anyway. I do like to collaborate um, in performance, and I think that's also kind of mirrors what the organization is about anyway, that, that it, sh it should be about collaboration and trying to bounce ideas and, and, and stuff off each other. There are some writers who are very, very insular or quite maybe follow the cliche of being a little bit of a hermit or stuck in a room and stuff like that and there are people within the organization that are, are like that and probably wouldn't read stuff and with with others or collaborate with others because it's more about you know their own voice and tailoring their own voice and then performing that um whereas myself i, th I think from a very early stage, probably also during the creative writing course that I did in, in Manchester, um, was about collaboration and collaborating with whoever uh, was around. And yeah, I think really now I don't have, would say, I wouldn't say that I have one mentor, but there are guys that I collaborate with more in the performance rather than the, the editing process. What do you feel happens when you collaborate and when you share? What's, what's the difference, do you think? I think you, you get a fresh perspective. Sometimes it's, it's quite difficult, especially if you're writing something that takes a very, very long time. There are certain poems that I've written that maybe will have been done over a half an hour session, but there's things that have lasted for three years. Just the way somebody pitches the, and their own voice is, is different from you, obviously, and um, the way that they interpret the text that you may give them to read. Or sometimes it's been the case where I've wrote a poem and then used that as a, as a springboard for somebody to look at it and see if there's a theme that they think fits what they've written about and doing a performance based on that. That was the, the most recent collaboration I did uh, with Michelle West Davis um, during the book fair here. 
Um, we did a couple of pieces where we, where we read our own stuff, but we wrote a co, I would call it a co-written poem. Um, I didn't tell her what the theme was. I, I just gave her the poem as it was, so she was. it was open to interpretation. The interpretation that you could maybe have got from my section of the poem was that it was about either somebody who is homeless or a stray dog or something like that. And the poem that she chose to mesh into it was a piece that she'd written about one of the cats that she'd adopted. So obviously she'd interpret it in a certain direction. Um, but I think that the, the collaboration is successful if I think you see an, as a writer... You see somebody interpreting your work and collaborating with that work. So it's very, very rare that you might get some feedback from from your readers. You might have guys coming up to you and, and saying that they liked your work or something like that. But it's very, very rare that you actually get a really in-depth interpretation of your work. And I think that's where the collaboration comes in that it also adds to it. There is a possibility for further interpretation by whoever listens to that piece or whoever reads that piece. So yeah, I think that's, that's what, it, what it's about. It's nice as well because you, you find out the meaning, you know, from somebody else and, and it's a passing on as well, isn't it? Which, like you say, you don't often get privy to as a writer. And, and, and also that can be quite lonely, not being able to know what, how people are responding to your work. I mean, I know it's not important for everybody to hear how people respond to your work it's interesting for you to move forward and, and the growth of creativity to have some kind of insight into how other people are taking your work you know good or bad uh, I think that's really interesting have you got anything that you can read to us okay <laughs> uh, just give me a sec <laughs> maybe I can read the collaborative piece yeah uh, that would be nice okay mash up so yeah, this piece is the piece that I read with Michelle West Davis, um, and I will read it just my, myself. Uh, but in the collaboration, each stanza was read by one of us. Um, so it was split up, me doing the first stanza and Michelle doing the second and me doing the third and so forth. Okay, lying on cardboard, creaking and shivering from cold, fragile, exposed, bareback and broken, cut down, stumbling to the floor, crawling across tarmac to get to concrete shelter, trembling in abandoned houses. The cut on my neck is healing pretty fast. Small price to pay to be rid of that dreadlocked hair that served as a neck brace. At first I booked getting it, but after a while I got into it and enjoyed the attention. Neglected, abused, taunted, mistreated. Not so long ago, I lived in another world, one where my stubs were constantly bleeding, one where I had to fight for every scrap of food, one drop of water for that quenchable thirst, one drop of brandy to warm the aching bones and slowly eat it away at the liver and soul. Pitch and tone out there on their own, occasionally huddling together, thrown away and discarded, threadbare and alone. Now mornings, I lay on my back and stretch. That's a great way to listen to songbirds. I love hearing as well. I think it's great when you read your poetry. I think especially when it's you that's written it, the power of the word comes out. It's lovely. What made you kind of go into that direction of performing your work? What's driven you? It's, it's quite a long story, actually. When I was at school, I had a quite big argument with my English teacher. And during that argument, she accused me of plagiarism for a short story that I wrote about orcs, of all things. So mm -hmm. I had to reference all, where I got all my ideas from. And the head of the English department at the time at, at the school backed me up and was kind of on my side. The principal was involved. It was all complicated. You know, I had to vouch that it was not plagiarized and so forth. On the top of that, the head of English, you know, he was quite impressed with, with the short story and asked me if I would like to read a poem that was written by a, a previous student, a graduate. Um, she wrote a poem about Macbeth. And because he knew that I had a theater background, 
he said, would you like um, to read a poem? Have you ever read out loud um, to an audience? And at that point I hadn't, so I, I tried it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I got a lot, quite a good feedback from the person who wrote it because she, she came to the event itself. It was of quite nerve wracking, I would say. Um, we had quite a lot of rehearsal for it and to try and get the intonation and try and get the rhythm right for what he was trying to achieve um, took quite a while. Um, but I, I think from that experience, it's because it was quite different, obviously, from the theatre and it being scripted and you very, very rarely read a piece of poetry if you're doing theatre. So, yeah, it goes back to school and, and from that experience, so, you know, getting something quite positive out of what initially was a quite a negative experience with my English teacher inspired me to at least read out loud work at a point I wasn't writing my own stuff that really came later more as a I became quite disillusioned or lapsed as an artist um, and writing seemed to be a natural progression and I started to write probably I would say seriously between the age of 15 to 17 and then not really performing my own stuff until I was at university and one of the tutors at university um, persuaded me to read my own stuff and then that steamrolled into setting up a writer's performance evening and helping contribute to a writer's performance evening at university and yeah from that point on I really saw it more as writing for performance and it does have a completely different intention and, and you you write completely differently obviously because you know you can also see that if you compare presenting to somebody writing emails or something like that there's a completely different style that's going on there um so i think that's also why i'm interested in things like hip-hop i'm interested in things like battle rap and stuff like that just because the genre is, is so suitable for writing for performance uh, rather than writing for the page. I'm not saying that I don't write for the page, but I would say that the, the percentage split is probably still 70 to 30. So thank you for speaking to me. Um, thank you for, for doing the podcast. I'm sure we'll have lots of different podcasts as we go along. This has been about you. So uh, thank you very much. No worries. Take care. If you would like to know more about Leipzig writers and Stuart, Follow the links below. If you are a creative organisation and would like to be interviewed, please contact us via our website www.thefactoryline.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for listening.